Thank you. Nice. Thank you. So nice to see you. Great. Okay, so without any further ado, everybody, this is Kutra Vashtra, the Agra Soft. And um, I think we should just begin. So introducing Chelsea. Chelsea, over to you. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Chris. Hi, Ajwan. Thanks for joining us. The, the screen there. Can you make it bigger? Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so small now. Oh, yeah. Hopefully. Oh, that's wonderful. That's good, 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 good. Okay. We just, watched, we just re watched some of us and watched for the first time your film. So, thank you so much for making that for the exhibition. Um, I personally thought it gave a huge amount of your personality to us. And we learned a lot about you, and I really enjoyed it. I think everyone else quite liked it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just going to kick off with a few questions, both about the film, but also about AAR, both as a book, but also the exhibition here. Um, some related to some things I've read about you, some related to the essay, some related to your film. And then I'm going to hand over to uh, those who have joined us to ask you questions as well. I hope that's okay. Yes, awesome. Great, so um, I thought it would make sense to start from the beginning, uh, which is, of course, the place of creation for AAR. And also at the very beginning of my essay, I quote you, in that moment of humiliation, depression, and lack of faith in yourself, a book is born, bang, the bubble pops. And I just wondered if you could expand on that bubble moment, that humiliation, and that depression when AAR began. <laughs> that, that's really a, a good question. For uh, for the first moment, touch the, the the core part. I think you know because as an artist, we always felt somehow disconnected with the real world, and especially um, for the for the current environment, you know, we feel everything is it's a. Uh, it's so amazing, but it's also overwhelming, and we feel sometimes some moment we feel like oh, whatever we try and the things that uh, uh, sort of uh, you cannot reach the, the certain goal you wanted, and uh, we wanted to 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 use the book as a media to show that we artists we are uh, we are strong enough to to be able to to do something that we feel. Um, uh, connected to the world around. Well, I can add uh, uh, that creation is a conflict, and uh, the bulb, the explosion you mentioned before, it's just a matter of time when you full of the energy that cannot be kept inside, and uh, the conflict is a uh, moving it's a cause for anything i think in the world inner conflict social conflict physical conflict etc so at that time we are and we were immigrants we were in the country in the united states for three years already with by the time we started aar and we know all all these issues with you know culture with society and plus we felt here accommodation, isolation sort of, we, 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 found, we find out we have different reaction on, on cultural thing, on environment. And AAR uh, has some, let's say, hidden layers with our reaction on modern process of social process and a little bit cultural process. So as you asked, why we started or what was, what is the bubble reason? That's just your energy, you cannot keep inside. Something like that. Nice, that makes sense, I guess, a comet and an explosion and a bubble. And I think also the reference you make to being a migrant and coming to another place in a culture and having a different reaction um, I wondered if you could touch upon nostalgia a little bit in that work. Was this a way then for you to revisit those kinds of feelings of, you mentioned childhood, 
nature. Um, you mentioned uh, that you can be at home anywhere, but actually there is somewhere in your mind that does represent home if you feel like a migrant. Can you talk a bit more about that? Yes, of course. For um, when we first came to New York, it's it's just like people always say, "Oh, yeah, this is uh, such a diversity. Have so many people, you know, people here writing. It's like a second home." Uh, we, More cliche, melting pot, melting pot, melting pot. Tired to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, it, it's it's also uh, it's like all the other big cities. We are um, uh, lock ourselves in a in a unit in a box and uh, we are dealing with our own. It's very stressful. Let let me interrupt you. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm done. But I mean, it's very stressful to be alone in another planet. New York is another planet. Culturally, for AJ, she is nomad. Me too. I, I'm a crazy traveler. I don't. I mean, we don't know where where we where to go. We feel good and bad in any place we are in. So when we are in New York, New York is the worst place in the world, and one of the best places. <laughs> <in the world. laughs> Like yes, it's, it's, it's true. So yeah. you feel you feel humiliated, you feel despondent, depressed, whatever. You feel so bad every time you go outside. You go, what's up, bro? How are you? Oh, oh, oh. It smells of freedom. <laughs> but you feel what what to do with that? Where is your freedom still? So it's very exciting. You want to share your reflection on it. Yeah, it's a it's it's a, it's a symbol of freedom, but uh, in a way you cannot find the so-called freedom and uh, everybody is uh, so connected but also isolated and uh, with the with the modern technology of course now we are <laughs> we are using that as a some good of output but in some way people are really isolated we feel we are disconnected with our past our history and also also with the <laughs> and then and then nostalgia and your background pops because you have no literal, literal connections with, with normal reality. You are not normal. What is your identity right now? Of course, you want to put your hand inside of yourself and bring here your personality and your background, mm -hmm. which part of which is nostalgic elements, your structure. And uh, surprise, surprise, believe or not, surprisingly, uh, Eastern culture, Asian culture, and Chinese root is very similar to, uh, let's say, my eclectic and a uh, little bit nature-based environment. Arjun loves sky, flowers, watching, you know, birds or sunsets. I most most westernized boy, but. Uh, this kind of lyrical and analog component, it's pretty much similar in, in, in us. And we don't know both how to deal with gadgets. I'm pretty silly how to press buttons on TV. I'm really dumb, I don't know how to do that. TikTok, all this time, Instagram. I <laughs> everything goes so fast and so well. And then what you can put on opposite side. So of course you start to bring yourself to that, to, 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 to reality. I think it's also like kind of true, uh, our childhood is kind of a more innocent and true nature. That's a way we can embrace our current reality and uh, blending into it. Mm. Yeah, I quite like that reference to an, an innocence, I guess, because there's something about the images for me in the show that do feel well, they're, they're dreamlike, aren't they? They're, well, you might say they're augmented reality, of course, but they're also coming from somewhere inside of your head, which to me feels somewhat dreamlike, but also references all of those things you mentioned, the sort of Russian, Russian and Chinese backgrounds, um, open skies, nature. I love the piece that we ended on here, um, which has the legs flying out of the sky. I don't have the book list with me, I can't remember the names, but, um, can you talk a bit about the, you mentioned the handmade quality and the lack of kind of digital augmentation, which is what's also really great about these photographs. Is that something, careless enjoyment, enjoyment that one's called, um, with the legs. 
can you talk a bit about why you why it's important that everything is handmade and handcrafted for these photographs? It's a, it's a connection first of all because with the handcrafted we feel we are so close. This is uh, this is this is like we we gone through the process to make the idea realized through this handcraft because we can do it with digitalized, you know, <laughs> actually many people comment on this, it looks like a, a Photoshop or like just a digital image drawing or uh, paintings. Uh, but uh, uh, it's, uh, for us, it's, it's important to differentiation on the digitalization and the handcraft. It's not, a, it's not, a, it, it, it's not like um, for a skill or, um, or uh, other type of uh, reference, but more like um, uh, a mean to express expression. I mean, digital art, you can also uh, put a lot of uh, self-expression, but, but from our concept, this is more um, uh, a natural way we use it. We like to put the effort. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a way to travel into the past and then go through the present and then, and then jump to the future. So we feel in this way, all the dots is connected with the touch, with the more tangible, um, tangible elements to put within it. I think digitalization is it's a process of form formalization of the culture and civilization. It's a standardization of everything. We are became ourselves agreements with social reality. We shouldn't do this, we should do this, everything should be expected. You don't have rights to say that, you don't have to touch that, you don't say can I kiss you and so on and so forth. All, everything is protocol. Out of protocol, jail, death, or, or more, more like moral punishment. So analog, it's a metaphorical um, echo, uh, it's a poetical, poetical, um, declaration uh, about um, missing times when the candles were instead of electricity, when no surveillance cameras on the street, you don't have to have QR code with a uh, COVID shot in order to go to a restaurant, like in Russia right now, I, I don't know, in New York maybe too. So we are now feel we we are in the boxes and we don't know what to do with that. Uh, but before we slept on the grass, literally, we spent summers in the grass, we, we smelled uh, cow poo, we enjoyed that. So this is analog form of art, I would say. And analog form of exploring the world. If you turn your way, turn your eyes to philosophers, they always uh, try to say for modern civilization, uh, existence is the source of, of life, let's say, not, not possession, not artificial uh, digitalization thing, like indirect way to, to react on, on reality. That's what analog form for me means. Handcrafted too, yes, yes. It's, you, can, you just, you are by, by setting up with handcraft, you are coming back to existence, to, na to nature in good connotation of, of meaning of this word. Oh, interesting. Okay, I thought it was interesting that you brought in a, a sort of a philosophy, I guess, in your approach to the idea of touch and bringing it back to a kind of pre-digital era. Um, right. I guess that, that kind of leads to one of my questions around influences and you you did mention Fellini in your film, um, but of course in some other interviews you, you mentioned a lot of other people as well. I just wondered if you could talk a bit more about how you're finding, because you also talk about authenticity in the film, how you're finding your own voice amongst and around all of these other influences. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, I think it, it, in the fi film, I, um, I said something like, I don't believe, I believe there, it, 
it is authenticity, but the, in terms of definition, it's a little bit different uh, in terms of art creation right now. It's not like you create something uh, never existed before. I think what Chelsea means, what, is you, what did you bring? What's new from your side, uh, right? Right. What's your identity means what's your fresh message to, right. to, to, the, the, to the art, if you want to say something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, if I want to say something. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I think Ajuan, you're probably talking about, yeah, you're referencing how your point you made, which was about everything, you know, the idea of realism is everybody has their own vision of something. Even if it's real, it's still your own vision, right? So. Even if you're influenced by other people, you can still have your own take on that. Is that kind of what you talked about in the film? Right. I believe everybody's artist in its own way. Um, the, the thing you, you do, the, 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 the touch, even, even, even a group of photographers, let's say, you go to the same place and then you, you take a shot, it's, it's different, it's completely. And the, uh, it's, if you put your thoughts inside, you wear considered every details, it, it is a uh, part of the creation of authenticity. Uh, yes, you're right. I mean, the answer for this question does not exist in, 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 you know, in one particular shape. Uh, for, for me, identity, this term, for me, it's difficult to understand what it means because for me, identity is your conflict with the world and it's already splashed a lot of, a lot of creativity as your reaction on the world. World says letter A, you say, no, 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 wait a minute, it's a B. Then world say, no, it's not B, it's A. Then you start to, so you uh, spontaneously create something if you are not willing to go with the way that, that social rules, protocols, let's say, yeah, says uh, uh, us to go. So identity is something that's automatically already in, in between your bones, let's say. No, I like that. You said identity is identity. your conflict with the world, your own conflict with the world. Uh, <laughs> your own conflict with the world. I think, <laughs> I don't answer for him. Okay. <laughs> it's not like a rebellion, it's like you try to against the world and then it's, it's, it is your identity. It's not like that. It's just the, uh, we try to to uh, to 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 um to express our voice. There is something different opinion. It's not like oh we don't like it. We will try to uh, against it and um, get rid of it. No, no. If even if say the protocol said A, even we have question mark, we will find our own way to say oh actually you know A is not right. You know we think about the B. You know if we don't want me to do B, I want to show you B actually is a good option. Maybe you can. You know, let's look at it. It's it's, it's kind of okay, good. Maybe it's even better. Right. Uh, I, I I think it's it's a uh, peaceful and it's intellectual fight. And fight is good. That's, that doesn't mean it's very harmful. It's competition. For example, if you see sports, uh, soccer or uh, uh, ice hockey or even chess, it's always battle, and you might see the bloody faces there. Even it's chess. Oh, let me punch your face. You know, we are like. My, Awesome. It's, 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 life is not um, flat, so the conflict, it's a good way to evoke your, evoke your destiny, your intellectual merit, let's say. Why you, why you live and what you want to say, it's normal to be a little bit uncomfortable with conversation. I mean, have different opinions with each other. It's normal. Yeah, in another way, it's a little bit stronger curiosity. <laughs> and curiosity, of course, of course, of course. I, I like that because I think you, you referenced also um, uh, social anthropology, well, symbolism, social anthropology. So you, you do talk a lot about kind of rebelling against these expected social sort of traditional uh, traditions and, and, and things, regardless of where you're from. So the idea of a identity being wrapped up in conflict kind of makes sense in terms of what you're trying to do. And, and there is a lot of emotion in these, in these photographs. You know, there's, there's, as I said earlier, a lot of joy, and then there's some very dark imagery as well. And I mentioned um, uh, self-confidence, which ironically, the image uh, doesn't kind of look like somebody who's self-confident. An altruism regret with the razor blade. And I just wondered if you could talk a bit about 
how you set the mood for those photographs. Is it the mood that you're in when you're taking them or when you're planning them? It's mostly the mood when we, um, um, mood maybe not, not, uh, not the, the world. Um, it's, uh, it's the message we have it in mind when we planning that shot. Uh, when, we, when we actually took that shot, um, when we see everything set it up, of course that moment will reflect a certain message or certain um we can still use mood i guess you know the, the feelings we, we 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 try to evoke and um and that moment still have it why well, we're planning it and why we still you know like the moment we feel uh, the shot is ready and then the fit the mood is right the feeling is right so that 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 still have it that right and for example for razor blade guy it's Every creation is long term. Uh, first, it's a draw, it's not, it's vague idea. If you don't know what's going on, then we start to talk, we sketch. Then we bring uh, guys, pro props, guys who will a little bit limit our dreams and say, no, guys, we cannot do that. So, how about extend, the, how about working with background? What, what should we say by background? And you always limited by time. You limit by physical, physical dimensions, right? Time so, and space. So yeah. So uh, it's not pure. It's not your pure imagination, and you can do whatever you want to do. It's uh, the project itself, generally speaking, has an uh, element of improvisation. Why? Because you are limited with time and your possibility to, to handle physical things. You literally cannot uh, fight with gravity. For example, uh, going to the good mood, traveling to the good mood. Yes. Yeah. Right, so it's, it's uh, is our dream to overcome gravity. gravity. Uh, but how we can, we cannot fly literally, we cannot shoot in the air. Oh, you can go to Mars almost uh, very soon. Yeah, <laughs> we kind of, we ironically play around with that. We, we pretend, we, we, we try to not have gravity on photos. We kind of metaphorically state that everybody is isolated and dream, dream, dreams about the same, the same thing. Oh, how can I jump through my building now? Oh, my apartment is quite high. No, I can die. But let, let me try. It's like four floor. Okay. Not good, Brooklyn. Maybe I will be on the street for five days. So then you you, you take a picture. Oh, maybe that girl should go there. And now we design even our studio. I feel pretty much strange here, as if we didn't see people for many years. It's it's dark now, and uh, it's pretty much isolated. And uh, yeah, it's strange. Another way we want to to create something like uh, impossible possible. Just right. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm conscious of time, and I want to hand over to the to to the audience, <laughs> to everyone who's joining us. Um, so I've got one last question. Oh, that sounds really. I've got one last kind of formal question, and then and then I have a slightly lighthearted one. I hope. Um, this one is about um, AAR being what you call starting from a happy pain. And I actually got a feeling of almost like you're working through uh, therapy when you made AAR. Uh, and you mentioned self-development tools and things like that. And I wondered if there's, besides art and besides AAR, are there other self-development tools that you both use um, to explore different aspects of yourselves? <laughs> Argument. <laughs> um, so, you know, uh, when we when we doing the project, it's it's uh, uh, it's a lot of uh, argument efforts. So, so that's uh, what, you know uh, how the details how we come up with this that and the, uh, overcome the gravity and sometimes it's reality and uh, dream to be compromised. It's, it's, uh, sometimes we won't say no, but the, uh, another time, yeah, 
have to be yes. So it's an, always a little bit of fight, uh, like this, like that. But in, in reality, for everything else, I think the communication, argumentation is not necessarily a bad thing. I and mean, sometimes the culture make us feel like, oh, we have to always smile to each other, to treat each other nice, friendly, even there is some flaw or something um, maybe not so good. We should also uh, not say, say anything, but actually uh, argue, argument is to, it's a good to, to help each other, to help things to go through. I mean, I agree. Yeah. I mean, conflict again. Uh, <laughs> uh, so in, in terms of self-development, uh, I think Chelsea, it's, uh, you know, when you watch TV or your favorite movie, you feel first, wow, it's possible like that? Oh, wow, what kind of freedom they brought to you? You want to be in the movie, you want to be part of that, you want to make your own movie, you feel the freedom, fresh, fresh air or fresh medicine, I don't know, whatever you like more. You feel, as I said before previously somewhere, you are not alone, it's so much important. You hear the voice and then you, you want to jump to that. So here we want to bring the, to the people um, kind of message, you are not alone, you can join us, you can do something that you want to do, you can treat yourself if you stuck. We are all stuck. We are all lost, obviously, especially after COVID. And we need to do now all this shots, gun shots or whatever it is. Tests. Tests. Yeah. Then we have to wear masks. Then we don't have to wear masks. Then we do again this, this. So then you go to, then you open up the book that you like. You feel, oh my God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You kiss the pages. Mwah, mwah, mwah. That's so good. Here too. We want to bring people kind of hope. Okay, life is good. It's still awesome thing. Let's let's do something. As you watch again, as you watch Fellini, I feel this. Wow, these characters, they're so much crazy. What is this movie about? I love it. I love it. That's doesn't make sense, but that generally it's what is life about. Okay, so I got a bit of escapism mixed with a community building. Is that kind of what you're getting at? Yeah. 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 Great. Well, my, my last question was just about the film. Um, Kuzma, could you talk me through the sunglass collection you were wearing? <laughs> a little bit. I just really loved them, so. You know, yeah, we, we, we had our previous project called Just to Land in Tokyo. And it was, uh, again, self-portrait exploration. And uh, uh, Ajayan wanted to, to improvise. We, we lived here third year in New York. And uh, she wanted to practice some portraiture, some experimenting with, with digital photo. And I started to, to collect different glasses because as you know, I'm nearsighted, and for me it's not comfortable to look at people directly. So I need kind of hide myself uh, in order to be more confident. So I started to collect nice glasses and I discovered there's endless opportunity. So I'm now on my first step. Yeah, and it should be, like Andy Warfel, it should be stupid, it should be plastic, it should be pretty much cheap. And look gorgeous. So I think I have now 100 pieces maybe, but I, I, I feel it's, I will not stop. Yeah, we should control the budget that uh, each year glasses should end at $10. Under, I would say under $2. Great, great. Well, she lots was fabulous. <laughs> she was fabulous. Lots of that in America, I have to say. Great. Well, who wants to ask a question? Does anyone? Does anyone? I, I, can, I can repeat it if it's yeah. I love how he stands out completely because most of them are studio photographs. This one's actually natural light. That's the input one, isn't it? Good question. Uh, yeah. It was the story behind it as well. Possible because I couldn't find it. Yeah. So, uh, Kuzman Ajwin, the question is about this. Uh, you probably can't see it. Inviability of sorrow. 
the photograph that's actually out on a beach, um, which unlike all the others seems a little bit less studio based. Um, could you talk a little bit more about that piece? Your favorite piece. Yeah, it's one of my favorite pieces. Uh, why you asked about this particular photo? I'm just curious. <laughs> it actually stood out for me as probably one of the best photos in the whole thing, and it also uses natural light, not ah, super lighting. Uh, I see. I, I, I think we, we were greedy to go outside. We spent two months in studio, in warehouse, and we, we spent the many times for preparation and we always kept in mind to go outside and uh, we probably will do next project more outside but it's it's more difficult because you cannot control as you said light, light and environment wind moisture rain everything and also you, you have to have bring light there it's it's just difficult. Yeah, but uh, for uh, for for this project, we have maybe for this uh, exhibition particularly, we don't have much for the outdoor. But uh, in the whole theory series, uh, we have uh, uh, roughly like twenty five uh, shots uh, on the outdoor. Uh, it's um, we claim that there is some particular concept that it's more uh, suitable for the. Other uh, other uh, situation just because of the the concept itself. For instance, this piece um mentioned it's uh, it's about the nature, about uh, more uh, the memory. So 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 the, the the sky, the ocean, and with the wind blow away this uh, this tape. And while we're there, the sound, this tape making, it it's really adds um to the 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 feeling we wanted to create. For this particular photo, so some outdoor shooting is a it, it's a it's part of the uh, uh, you know the, the plans. Um, but for the information, it's sometimes difficult. So we we try to um to uh, limit some uh, quantities and uh, keep some in mind for the future. Remember, remember, we want we wanted to make a little bit on the beach. Want to make a portrait, poor portrait on the beach, but with 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 a, with a girl with some strange dress. But for a long time, we couldn't uh, create how it should be, what kind of dress, because uh, we tried to um, use the film, thirty-five millimeters film, and I don't know why it didn't go through. I don't remember why we stopped with why we stopped with tape, like video tape. So it's it's kind of creation. It's it's a it's a long process. I think a couple months we did that. We tried this, but we wanted to go outside and we wanted to bring some feelings of loneliness, of sorrow, of your past. What does beauty for you means? Uh, we wanted to play. We wanted to send the message. I think at some point to the fashion industry, but make it slightly different. As always, uh, photographers do between between fashion and art, but. We didn't want to jump to fashion because after that we would be blamed forever, your commercial. Uh, but here we wanted to, to make mix beauty, mix anxiety, a little bit desperation, again, past nostalgic elements because it's a record tape we don't use anymore. So, etc. Some like this, so on, so on, right? Yeah, I think maybe it's a long answer. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's satisfied. Uh -oh. <laughs> you did well. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. I would be interested in like how did you find each other as collaborators? Was it the moment uh, when you arrived in New York as uh, immigrants or or yeah, how did it come about? Uh, it's almost uh, the, the moment when we arrived here. Uh, when we first met, uh, it's just a couple months when we uh, uh, arrived here. He came uh, like two months earlier than I, and at that time we were both each to do something. And um, and I had some ideas in mind. I want to find someone to come work with me, and uh, he had something in mind, and we we accidentally met, and. Uh, 
So this is, uh, uh, it's almost like you understand, and we, 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 we started with so one project uh, uh, as a kind of an introduction, and uh, the more we work together, we more we feel we uh, kind of grew together, and then, then the stage is uh, um, evolving more and more. Right, I would say it's very coincidence. It's a miracle. Uh, it's very difficult to collaborate, especially in city search as New York. Everybody's ambitious. We are kind of ambitious, right? But then your circumstances, they just give you settings in which you can do that. You, you have little luck here, you have little luck here, here. Maybe it's like DNA was born on the planet, just accident. How, for me, it's still, oh my gosh, how, how is it possible? To, to do that, so it's I, can, I I don't know I cannot explain it how we how we start to work together and it it went well. <laughs> it, has of, it has a lot of problems, but but we you know we've done as I don't know. We went back to see the moment. It's it's really easy to think of, but sometimes it's uh, um, you know as as I recall kind of a um, destiny. Um, Incidental, it happened, and uh, uh, maybe it means it. And I think that for life is a, a lot of uh, the surprises, also full of uh, um, uh, magic in some particular moment. You know, the, the moment that really matters to you, usually it, it's unpredictable, and it happened, and you don't know how exactly it happened. But it is part of the uh, but I think destiny is very fragile. Uh, I have a question for you guys. Uh, do you talk, do you interact with your ex boyfriends, girlfriends, and husbands and wives to keep relationship, for example? It depends. There's some heads nodding. There's some heads nodding. There's some, I, I, my answer is no, I don't. I, once I'm done with someone, I move on. Anyone else? No? <laughs> It depends. Yeah. It depends. It depends. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so. Depends on how <laughs> why do you ask? So why I'm asking? The life is very random. Random. You don't know what's going on tomorrow, and uh, sometimes you feel insecure. If someone tells you, "Oh, safety is our priority," it's a lie. Hmm. There is no safety in the world at all. Only government can manipulate with you saying, oh, in sake of your safety, put mask or remove mask or whatever. So we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We always say, Antoine, let's work, let's be together forever. Let's be together 100 years. But tomorrow, Anjan approached to me and says, I'm going to London, I'm getting married. <laughs> so I said, okay, I will be there on your wedding. So. <laughs> Did I answer the question or not? Or, 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 <laughs> it was your own question. <laughs> <laughs> Did you answer your question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So that, so that, that kind of defeat. So we can't really ask what's next, then, because it could all change tomorrow if somebody goes and gets married and decides everything's going to change. Um, but you, you do reference that in your film as well. Towards the end, you talk a bit about. Um, you know, some plans you have, you have another hundred concepts and things like that. So, assuming Ajwan does not come to London and get married, <laughs> you, can you reveal anything about the next <laughs> project? <laughs> or, or are you telling us something? Revealing some plans. You go ahead. Um, we have so many plans, it's a problem. We cannot pick right, right plan. Right, go ahead. Tell us what we're going to do. If you want, once you say, we have to do that. Yeah, I said you can do the movie and then we have to finish it. Okay. So for the, for the AR series, we, we have a, a, a documentary, a mixed genre with fiction. And uh, it's, it's, it's not the, the, the cure. Uh, I'm the, the movie we project. It's another movie, movie. yes. Uh, independent one. It's a big secret, though. We have documentary already about AAR, but we want to mix with fiction. Mm -hmm. 
So we now are struggling when we have to, to finish fiction because it's very much difficult right now. So we are working on it, let's say. And yeah, it should be done this year. Yeah, and meanwhile, also, uh, we mentioned about the 100 concept. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's not a, a era two, but it's a continuation. We are still um, have the, the mind and, uh, and the feelings about uh, uh, it, uh, you know, metaphysics, and we want to brought more and to uh, and, uh, uh, convert it to, to, to to the current embedded into the, with the current reality, so we are um, tend to be involving with the concept that we have, and, uh, and uh, when we can do it. Oh, uh, this and next year definitely because we, we we will do we will do both movie I think and this and the photo new new photo project. So a little bit to bring back classical approach. Maybe again we will shoot on film because Adrian so much likes that bullshit. There's cameras that are heavy, big, then develop it, you know? I, I, maybe I told in my interviews earlier, we had, my parents were, they are artists, so they developed always film in, in the toilet. You cannot go there because it's always busy. And then drying, drying film everywhere on the ceilings. So it's such cool. And sometimes I cannot go to a giant bathroom because there's some film there. <laughs> it's a good technique. <laughs> Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Actually, I have one. So, would you say that um, the next phase, would you call it an, um, of AAR, would you call it a evolution of AAR or a mutation of AAR? <laughs> <laughs> or, what do you think? Or variants. Variants. try to make something something different because sequels or prequels or just uh, you know Terminator 1, Terminator 2 is a little bit boring so we will try to, 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 to surprise our, ourselves uh, but I think it might be still film, film photos and maybe we will go more outside that's the basic points about that but in terms of content should be should be different yeah, also, uh, last bit of thing I want to mention. Mm -hmm. um, um, we always talk about plants, but it's like life is always full of, uh, uh, you know, good things or some, like, I'm not going to get yeah. <laughs> but a lot of things going on. Uh, it's, um, uh, I think it's very important to, to try <laughs> to do something as much as, as possible um, whenever we can, because the future uh, is, uh, it's uh, it's full of um, uh, um, surprises. Sometimes it's good, we can improv it. But uh, I think it's good to do it right now and then today. Last year was a little bit overwhelming because it was difficult to gather crew and people to go together for shooting for everything. Everything is locked. So this year too. So we hopefully will have much better, much better time ahead of us. So. Yeah. Well, I loved also in, in the film, you ended on a similar note, Ajuan, I think you talked about now, you, if we've learned anything with all the loss, that now is the time to just do all the things that we want to do um, creatively and, you know, for personal um, happiness. So on that note, I think it's um, yeah. a lovely uh, chat. Thank you so much um, for joining us. Well, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And then and I wish you all the best. And this is really good uh, remote bridge between London and New York. It's unbelievable. It couldn't have been 20 years ago like that. Yeah. So technology gives us really amazing things also. We should be grateful for that, right? Right. And thank you very, very much, guys, for everyone who participated and came. It's very much, so much important for us you know, it's a very difficult time and uh, 
you see final result, but we all know each other how difficult to survive mentally right now and make things happen and done. So really, thank you. Thank you, Chelsea, and thank you, Harry, thank you, Hustle, yeah. and um, the thank you, everyone, coming out today. Yeah, we hope you um, See you soon, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend.